Today, we're doing an unboxing from Speed Cube Shop. I've got a couple packages that came in this week, and so let's get right into it. And then I have a few things from Amazon that are cube related that I figure we can get into as well. So first up here are the magnetic conversion kits. I got a strong and a light one, N15 and N35, and I have a couple projects that I'm gonna be doing with those upcoming soon, so stay tuned. Next is the Yushin Kylan V2 Magnetic. I was interested in this because it's a 55 and a half millimeter that is tiled. And I really like tiled cubes for some reason. Uh, it looks like a classic Rubik's Cube. They have a feel that I really enjoy. And for $9.95 or something like that, I've heard that it's pretty good once you get it set up. So I have some lube set aside to add to it and I think the tensioning system is just screws. So we'll do a setup on that in just a minute, but let me get through all of these boxes first. This one will cooperate. Um, so I have a new mat. So this is one that I really liked the look of. It's nice and simple. Uh, the other one I have is kind of the retro cool grid Tron-y looking one, and this is just a straightforward Speed Cube Shop one. Uh, a nice little cleaning kit. Again, that'll come in handy later. And this is replacement pieces for my Mega Minx. I didn't fuck up. So the gray side does not have a lot of high contrast between the yellow, white, and cream. And so I wanted to get this kit so that I stop mixing up those colors when I'm solving and not fully paying attention. So this is just to help with my contrast recognition, but I'm excited to get that going as well and continue learning Mega Minx. Why did I keep saying Pyraminx? And next up is my Unicube. So I'm very excited about this. This was set up by the Speedcube Shop Pros. I selected a few of my preferred lubes and also had them add a UV coating. And this is on the Gon 354M V2. So digging into the box, we have the usual Gon stuff, a little card, the bag to carry it with, and the instructions. But I'll get into a little bit on how I set it up later when I'm doing the solves. Yeah, I like the little display box and I really like the Gone colors. Uh, the one downside has been that a lot of their stuff is the frosted plastic, which doesn't have a super grip ability. I know it wears down as you use it, but I'm not solving fast enough for that to be a huge concern and I'm not solving enough on them for it to wear down very quickly. So I figured why not go ahead and get the kind of glossy coating applied to it. And I also had the Exo Shield protection stickers added, which makes it feel a lot like a tiled or stickered cube as you run your fingers across. Uh, since a lot of my cubes that I've learned on and that I solve with right now are that way, I'm hoping that it helps me kind of transition into other stickerless cubes. And you can see the size difference between the 354 and the 356 where it's just a little bit smaller look at that glossy yes love that and again i'm also a fan of the black internals versus the primary or the white ones it just helps the uh, contrast and the color recognition for me especially on the reds and oranges and greens and blues where i can confuse them uh, next up we have the amazon stuff so I've got the Rubik's Orbit and the Rubik's Perplexus. So let's start with the Orbit. I think this is basically just a two by two that you solve in a circular pattern instead of a cubed pattern. But it looks really cool and I figured it would be nice on the shelf. Oh wow, it turns really, really stiffly. Outside of this video, I tried to apply some lube to it and see if that would help at all. But the big problem is that you just have to have everything aligned really precisely. And with all of those different points of contact and kind of edge corners, it's very easy for it to get misaligned and turned poorly. The Perplexus is interesting. So this is a two by two Rubik's Cube that has a maze inside of it that you're supposed to get the little ball bearing all the way through. I've seen some of these Perplexus puzzles from I think Spin Master in the past, but this is the first time it's inside of a Rubik's Cube type of shape. I know they're working on a 3x3 version that's coming out soon, which is insane sounding. Again, this doesn't turn great. You're not really supposed to be speed solving on it or anything, but it looks cool 
the little ball bearing is just kind of in there floating around. It's not really stuck on the path at all, so I'm not going to try to solve that while on video. So let's get into setting up the Kylan. It's got a screw, just a normal screw system for tensioning. And I'm going to use some of the Compound X, which should help with the speed of it and also has a nice little pomegranate smell. Uh, this is a water-based lubricant, so it won't last super long, but it'll be a good chance to see how it will perform once I decide how I want to set it up and tension it. And even with just a little bit in there already, you can definitely feel the difference. I will get back to that after tension it in a little bit, but I want to get to this Mega Minx and swap the colors out. So they come in the two little pieces so that you can get all the gray face off and just swap them out. And all of those pieces have the magnets pre-installed in them. So this should be as easy as pulling out one whole face, changing out the tensioning system to the black version of it, and then snapping it all back together. I vanish for a second here to go find my screwdrivers. Should have started the video with that probably right next to me, but instead it was across the room. So the first thing I do is change out the screw and tensioning rod to the black version so that you never get a peek underneath that black cap to see the gray piece inside. Um, and then I separate out all the corner and edge pieces and start disassembling the gray ones, which have some lube on them. So when I first tried, it just went flying out of my hand. Um, so I start with all the same pieces and just swap them out. And this was a little bit tricky since it does have lube on it. I didn't want to wipe it all off and have to re-lubricate that side. So I'm using a small flathead screwdriver to kind of wedge underneath the crease at a part where it doesn't have high contact with the rest of the puzzle. On the stem pieces where there's three colors, it's really easy to just wedge them apart at the bottom of the stem because you have a nice little grip area to apply some tension. Yep, so those are all swapped out and now it's just time to stick them all back together and the magnets really help with this because as they get into place, they just kind of hold each other together and stick to the bottom of the cube that's already assembled. I really can't imagine having to do this without magnets installed. Everyone that was making adjustments to a Mega Minx pre-magnets, you were a different kind of breed. All right. I put this all together before putting the center cap on so that I could try to nail down the tension system as best as I could. So you can see me making a lot of turns, making a lot of adjustments, and then having to take the cube back apart a little bit so that I can fit the top back in. But it feels back to normal, and you can see how much higher contrast it is, even just at a glance. As I'm learning how to solve the Mega Minx, this is going to come in handy. Next up, I decide, let's go ahead and finish setting up the Kylan. So I take all the center caps off. You can see those tiles that are already pre-installed. And I found that loosening the tension system by about three quarters of a turn was around where I needed it to be. I probably could have gone a little bit looser and gotten just a tad bit better corner cutting, but I thought that getting much more unstable uh, probably wasn't a good thing. If anything, having it not have as good of corner cutting is going to help me try to be a little bit more precise in my turning. Especially since I'm still learning, I don't want to get in too bad of a habit early on. And so you can see how much smoother it's turning already, even though this is sped up quite a bit. Checking the corner cutting, it's not great, especially on the reverse corner cutting, but it's a lot better than what it was when it came in. So I'm very happy with it. Before putting it aside, I wanted to do at least one demo solve on it. So I pulled up a scramble and just got to solving it. And this was a pretty slow solve for me. I was just trying to really feel out the piece and to work in some of that lube so that it doesn't just sit and get gummy or evaporate before it fully distributes. But I really like this. I think this would be a great cheap travel cube. You could throw it in your bag. You don't have to worry about it scratching. And if it gets lost or something, it's only like a $10 replacement. And now this is the part that's really exciting. So this is the GON 354 MV2 that was set up by Unicube. 
and I do about an hour of solves on this. So it comes pre-installed with the lube and tensioning that I asked for, and that was a weight five on the core, Speed Cube Shop's Galaxy on the pieces, and again, this is UV coated with the ExoShield stickers on it for protection. So it feels kind of like a stickered or tiled cube, even though it's stickerless in appearance. Um, and the weight five is a little bit more of a heavy, gummier lube. Um, so it's not really like a speed lube, especially, like I said, as I'm learning, I don't want something to be too fast because I'm going to get a lot of lockups and I'm going to have really, really sloppy turning. So I wanted to get something on there that was a little more controllable. So it's like a six out of speed, a seven out of control, eight gumminess. So it's a pretty high gummy ratio and a seven in terms of heaviness. And all of those are rated on a 10 point scale. The piece lube is a little bit faster. So I went with Galaxy and that's an eight out of 10 on fastness or speediness. So it's a little bit faster. And then it has a little bit less control, so it's a 6 out of 10. Gumminess is still pretty high at a 7, but the heaviness feeling is dropped by quite a bit down to a 4. And so when I'm turning on it, it still feels pretty speedy, but it's right at about my control range where finger tricks just kind of feel like they snap from one position to the other. I'm still really getting used to using a properly set up and lubed cube. As you can see, I keep wiping my hands because I'm kind of working out some of that lube and feeling it on my fingers. Uh, I'm used to solving mostly with dry or barely lubricated cubes. And that's partially because I've been using Bluetooth cubes a lot. So things like the Go Cube, Rubik's Connected, the Geeker and Gone 356i. Uh, this is also why you see me mess up the timer a ton of times because I'm really used to those apps just starting the countdown as soon as I get the scramble and once their countdown ends the solve just starts there's no secondary uh, input that you need to say okay now I'm ready so especially early on you'll see that I got a lot of plus twos or some DNFs that I just skipped right past because I just am not used to that process and I've never been in a competition yet that whole you know, countdown and having to touch the thing again before it starts has just been very hard for me to wrap my brain around for some reason so I'm glad that I'm starting to use this other timer to at least get used to that and maybe as COVID starts to get more under control I'll get myself a proper timer and start to do more solves that way instead of just on my bluetooth cubes one of the downsides of not using the Bluetooth cubes though is I'm not getting my moves and rotations and all of that kind of info. And I guess I could sit and sort through and figure all of that out, but that seems like a pretty time consuming task and I would rather just pick up a Bluetooth cube and get that for free. So as we're going along, you'll see the top right corner is has all my current times and then it has my average of five. My current average of five on my main cubes is mid to low 50 seconds and so i didn't come in much worse than that overall on the entire solve so i'm pretty happy speed cube shop did a great job and i really recommend if you're looking at getting a custom setup cube you use your cube remember to like subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for when i do the next video thanks and see you next time